And yet again we have a new mysterious object discovered relatively recently, completely by accident. An unusual astronomical object you see right here. But in this case, it's actually even the name that's strange as well. The researchers behind this paper decided to name it Draculus Chivito. Now I actually had to look up what Chivito was. Turns out it's a very popular sandwich in Uruguay. Kinda looks like this. And though I guess maybe there is some resemblance, yeah, Dracula's sandwich? Uh, okay. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this mysterious object, what exactly we think it is, and actually talk about why this particular discovery is really important. It confirms an existence of an entirely new type of an object we've only seen before once. And so let's actually start with that. I guess a bit of history. And it all starts with infrared astronomical satellite, very often referred to as IRAS. The telescope that was responsible for creating the first ever infrared survey of the entire night skies. And this actually started back in 1983. And during its relatively short mission, it was able to discover a lot of different objects. For example, it discovered this unusual nebula you see right here. And actually was so successful that it eventually led to additional telescopes and then eventually led to the James Webb. But during its initial mission, one of the objects it discovered kind of looked like this. It resembled something we haven't seen before, at least back then. But then additional images taken by Arturo Gomez from Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory in Chile revealed additional features from the object that was previously only seen in the infrared. And I guess because maybe he was hungry or something, eventually this became known as the Gomez's Hamburger. That's actually literally the name of this object. And though it might not resemble a hamburger that you and I used to, nevertheless, that particular nickname stuck, and for many, many years, it was believed to be some kind of a very strange nebula, possibly thousands of light years away from us. But that's until 2008, something like 25 years later. Additional analysis using additional telescopes, and especially the analysis of this unusual dark band in the middle, revealed something that was invisible at first. This was not a nebula. Instead, the research you can find in the description revealed that this is basically a type of a baby star. Something we very often find in a lot of different molecular clouds, and something that we've seen many, many times before. Possibly somewhat similar to this, a few Orionis, but very likely much, much larger, much more massive, much more active, and definitely more extreme in a lot of other ways. And so, essentially this was a type of a protoplanetary disk but a disk seen from a different angle and thus appearing to us from a different perspective. And so essentially we're looking at this from the side. And so because of this unusual band in the middle, this could not be a nebula of any sorts. And so instead of this being a nebula 6500 light years away from us, Gomez's hamburger turned out to be just a young star approximately 900 light years away. Much, much closer, but also really massive and really extreme at least four solar masses and containing a large amount of gas and dust in the protoplanetary disk. As a matter of fact, one of the main ways this was confirmed was essentially by observing different types of carbon monoxide gas moving in what seems to be circular motion around the center. And this Keplerian rotation basically suggests that this is a protoplanetary disk, very likely representing a star that's not main sequence star yet, it's not burning hydrogen yet, but is about to become one really soon and will probably get rid of all of this gas in the process. But unlike a lot of other observations, it was also extremely hot, over 10,000 Kelvin. And so a lot of these individual features were very, very unusual and never actually seen before. But in this study, pretty much everything about this was now explainable, including the unusual reflection of the light you see as the white sides representing the buns of this hamburger with the dark band basically being all of this relatively thick gas. Intriguingly, additional observations also revealed a potential protoplanetary object, something that was maybe similar to Jupiter forming somewhere in a disk. But one of the most mysterious parts of this observation, and something that could never be explained before, was actually its location. Unlike a lot of other similar objects, this was not inside a nebula, not inside a molecular cloud, not inside anything. It was actually in the middle of empty space. In other words, this unusual star was actually forming by itself in the middle of nowhere, but also contained a huge amount of mass and a huge amount of material. But there was nothing within light years and light years away from it, including any molecular clouds 
or any regions of star formation. And so this was actually the biggest mystery. This strange hamburger was forming in the middle of nowhere through the process nobody could explain. And this was the mystery that stayed with us ever since the original discovery, mostly because no such objects have been ever seen again. Until now. And now we have that Dracula thing. The Dracula's Chivito, which I guess is a play on words from the Gomez's hamburger, which seems to be pretty much exactly the same. Very, very similar features, very similar observations, extremely similar temperature, once again thousands of degrees Kelvin, almost exactly the same orientation toward us, and what's even weirder, even relatively similar distance, 980 light years away from us, as opposed to just over 900 for the hamburger. But not in the same location at all. But once again, a lot of similar observations here do suggest that this is just a really, really massive protoplanetary disk of a relatively young A-type star. A really hot, massive star that's going to become super powerful once it initiates hydrogen burning. And so by itself, this is a very intriguing mystery. We have these two almost identical objects in very different parts of the night skies, but containing extremely similar features we've never seen anywhere ever before. But there seem to be only two of them in the night skies. But because there are now two, this is very likely a new class of newborn stars. And we actually have no idea how any of this formed. Neither one of them has any molecular clouds nearby, any nebula, or any regions with star formation, and none of them seem to be moving from a location where stars might have formed. In other words, there are no stellar nurseries anywhere nearby. At the moment, we don't even see any gas-enriched regions from which these stars could have collected all of this gas, forming these really massive stars. Both of these objects seem to be basically in the middle of empty galactic space. And so that's really where the mystery begins and I guess kind of ends. Nobody knows what's going on here. But visually, these do resemble a lot of protoplanetary disks, even the ones that were recently visualized by the James Webb. For example, compare this to some of the recent infrared observations from the James Webb, but in this case in the Orion Nebula. So in terms of visual description, they do seem very similar. Every one of these is a baby star as well, visible to us from a sideways perspective. And so it's quite likely that these are as well. But every one of these stars began their life inside a relatively dense cluster as a result of over-densities forming inside the molecular cloud. In other words, they began as a kind of a gravitational collapse of a lot of gas inside a somewhat turbulent environment, which then formed the unusual disks, made them spin more and more, and created a lot of additional formations, including the jets you see around some of them. But in order to form this disk, you do have to have gas with at least some momentum. So what exactly happened here? There's nothing around this. And so even though that hamburger was basically a mystery for something like 40 years now, because we now have two objects, someone might be able to solve this mystery in the near future. For example, by focusing on these extreme similarities, especially in terms of shape, size, and even the temperature, we may be able to find clues on how these formed and reach these incredibly large sizes and masses. For example, for this newly found object, it seems to be of the type that we usually refer to as Herbic AE type star, and it has an average temperature of 8000 Kelvin or 7700 Celsius, 14000 Fahrenheit, which is really really hot for a star of its age. And here the disk is also really large, it's approximately 1700 astronomical units in radius, or basically 40 times as large as the distance of Sun to Neptune, with a total mass of the disk being approximately 0.2 solar masses, meaning that it's going to end up producing a lot of large planets. And so all of this mass must have come from somewhere. But in terms of trying to understand this, and I guess trying to simulate this, what you're actually seeing right here is the image of the simulation and the observation. And so by modeling stellar formation, the researchers were able to create something almost exactly the same. And so this has to be some kind of a young star. But why these stars are isolated, that's the question nobody has an answer to. Although since two have now been discovered, chances are there are so many more around us. But going back to that original question, why Dracula though? At first, I actually assumed it was because of some kind of a vampiric property, such as maybe sucking matter away from a partner star. But it turns out that the actual reason is a little bit more uh, cheesy. Apparently, if you really squint your eyes right here, you can sort of see that there are unusual filaments 
that seem to be perpendicular to the disc, resembling fangs. Dracula's fangs. Okay, yeah, that's kind of pushing it. Anyway, despite the cheesy name, and that includes that first object, Gomez's hamburger, these are still really fascinating objects. These are definitely the closest regions to us with isolated star formation going on right now, and that's something that we don't really see much around, yet we have seen in various locations in between galaxies. And so maybe, by answering what's happening here, we can figure out how various stars can actually form without a molecular cloud. And so in essence, this is definitely a really important discovery, but a discovery that does not have a good answer just yet. Once we do have one, I'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.